Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Gary Cantrell podcast, the super infrequent, promised you like five months ago, I was back every week or close to every week, and boy, this year just went way off the uh, rails. If you did miss the previous video, I had announced that I got laid off from my job, essentially, and I have been plotting and planning as far as what is going to come up next, and I think I finally have figured out just a solid plan. So that is what this video is about. If you missed, by the way, the previous video, you can go ahead and click right up here. This is for people that are watching on YouTube. So it got laid off. It was a job that I had been told, God, this must have been no less than like 150 times. I was told, hey, buddy, you got a job for life if you want it. And then out of nowhere, the company just said, hey, we're, we're, we're laying people off. I can't be super specific about it, but I can kind of give you just my own personal perspective. And that's essentially what it was. So now we're in this kind of interesting um, situation where we've got a real chance here to do some really cool stuff. I mean, look, losing a job that you've had for 13 years, it's pretty terrifying, man. Like, it's not easy. So when you go into this and you're thinking like, man, I've just lost it all, it's it's not over yet, you know? And that's the kind of the amazing thing is that I think that we all do our best work. I think we all show up and perform best when we're under pressure, you know, like when we get too comfortable, you know, you don't, you don't really move along. You don't progress. You don't do, you know, anything. You just, you just kind of, you just kind of stagnate. And like I said, I think in the previous video, it's like in my mind as a creative, I always wanted to quit the job. I didn't want the job to quit me and it just didn't work out that way. So anywho, this is what is next. So approximately two weeks before I got the news that I was going to be out of work, I got a email from Bubba the Love Sponge, you know, a guy that uh, he's had this legendary career in radio. He's totally reinvented himself with the digital space and Approximately about two years ago, I reached out to uh, Lummy, who's one of the co-hosts on the show, and I had basically just said something to the effect of, hey, dude, like I, I video edit, I audio edit, like if if I can be of any help, please, because around this time, Bubba was kind of like laying out on the air, like where he'd like to go with his YouTube channel and just the brand in general, and... I mean, I had a number of ideas, but they don't know me. Like, why the why the fuck would they listen to me? They have no idea, you know, who I am or what I bring. But if I show them what I can bring, well, that might be a different story. And that is quite literally exactly what happened. So I offer it up, and he's cool with it. And so we just we just go with it. And... For the next, you know, two years, I am just, whether it's, hey, man, can you edit this audio clip for me? Or, you know, hey, you have any of these shorts, you know, the vertical short form content? And I'm like, yeah, I can I can do all that. And, and actually, vertical short form content is something that I could totally be off on this, but I don't think I am. I don't know that there was any vertical short form content on that YouTube channel before I spoke up to Lummy about it. And in fact, that first summer we were throwing stuff on TikTok just to try it out because he ran the TikTok page. And uh, I don't want to get super long winded about this, but basically, you know, I, I, I basically figured out of my mind, like, this is how you stop people in the scroll. This is how you get eyeballs on whatever it is that whatever video it is that you put out. I kind of figured out a formula 
and don't get me wrong, they're not all, you know, they're not all like five, six, seven million views, but there are a few that are damn near eight million, and there's a few more that are uh, five and below, and a couple of million ones, and then the rest are like a couple hundred thousand, a few ten thousands, and there are some. I mean, I, I, I don't know that any of my shorts that I've made have stayed below. 5,000 on YouTube. I could, I could also be totally off on that, but I don't think so. I think that the way that I kind of, uh, created this formula that I have for videos that I make is like, I have a certain understanding of how they're going to perform, right? Like I know, I mean, I have ADHD. I've talked about this before. And I think that that gives me a competitive advantage because that is the world that we're living in right now, that people are impatient. They don't want to uh, necessarily always watch the long form, although the tide is changing on that as well. And we can talk about that at some point. But um, when it comes to the vertical short form content, I feel like I have a pretty damn good idea of what is one going to stop somebody in the scroll and two, what's going to keep them watching. And yeah. So fast forward two years and I get a message from, uh, no, it wasn't even a message. It was during the hot mic on during Bubba's show. I was in chat saying good morning to the staff. And uh, I said, good morning to Seth. And he asked me, did I want to do a wrestling podcast with him? Because he is like the program director, the head of the podcasting department for the BRN. And I was just like, wow, you know, like I haven't, I hadn't done a wrestling podcast in years. I mean, I know like my buddy, Alan Martin and I, I think we recorded one or two, maybe in 2020. And so, yeah, like we, I hadn't really like done a ton of podcasts, but when he invited me, it was like, it was like something was telling me like, yes, you got to go do this. So I did. And we started working together and I remember we were just on a call one day and he's like, yeah, man, I'm going to try to get you in, man. I'm like, wow, this is, uh, this is mind blowing information to me because this is, it's where I always wanted to be, but you know, I know that, you know, it's kind of like a small crew there and I don't want to try to impose or you know, try to like push my way in and where it gets uncomfortable because I had been doing a ton of stuff, um, for free. You know, they let me come to BARP and stuff and I got some merchandise and stuff like that, which I'm very appreciative of literally everything. But as far as like a job that you, you know, you get paid for like for two years, you know, I was just doing, and, and, and this was my choice and everybody, there are very few that actually understood my vision, but like literally everybody told me that I was crazy. They were all like, why are you doing this? Who in their right mind works for free, right? But again, I had a vision and it goes back two years to where I know that I can offer a lot for these guys, you know, and I understand the show. I understand the brand. I've been listening since 2007, like I get it. Um, but they don't know me like, you know, like unless I prove myself. And so that's ultimately what I had to do. Everybody thought I was crazy. They didn't understand it. They talked shit behind my back. I heard about it. I know about you. And, um, here we are. I'm hired. I'm in, you know, when I got the gig, it's like, a, it was like a part-time gig because, you know, I had my full-time job at the time. And, uh, as of right now, that's pretty much what it is. And I'm, I'm fine with it and I'm happy to just have a foot in the door, you know, show now officially what I can, what I can bring to the table and, uh, potentially work my way up into uh, a full time status when they did, when they deem that that is necessary. And, uh, yeah, so that is the deal, but people thought I was crazy and this was like the one time that I literally bet on myself like for real and actually went through with it because I could tell you like a hundred other times where, you know, I had a plan, I had a vision and I just did not fulfill it. And basically I held myself back as a result. So 
this was the one time where I actually bet on myself, you know, when, when nobody else really saw the vision or believed in me, you know, whether it's at home or at work, you know, there are just people that didn't see the vision and I saw it and I knew what I brought to the table. And this is the one time we're like, no, fuck that, man. We're going all in. Like we're going all in. So that's not my full story about what's next. And this is going to end up being a really long winded thing, but that's part of it. And because it's part time right now, obviously I have a couple of other blank spaces I need to fill in. Right. So, you know, I've been looking at stuff like Amazon flex. I like Amazon flex, the idea of it at least because they have early morning shifts and, you know, Bubba show starts at six. So they have shifts that end around six. And I like to listen to the show live because I want to take my notes, figure out what video I'm going to make for that day, and then go with it. In the last like five or six years, I became like the really early morning guy. And I go to bed at like eight o'clock at night. And, um, you know, I'm kind of cool with it for, for now, at least like even when this job is over, I probably will still keep to somewhat of an early schedule. Just that's just how I am in nature. So that is definitely on the table. So Amazon flex, that's another revenue stream. It's not a full-time stream. I don't think, I think people that like strictly do gig economy and that, what is gig economy? It's, it's stuff like Amazon flex, DoorDash, Uber eats, uh, Lyft, things like that. I think those people are probably doing like, you know, like an Amazon flex shift and then doing a bunch of Ubers or Lyfts or whatever. I'm not really feeling that life right now. That's I I've done Uber before I've done Lyft. I just, I don't know, man, I get weird about it because people, they get weird about which way they want to go. And, you know, I kind of just like to be in my car by myself. That's just kind of what I like to do. So, um, I don't think I'll be doing that necessarily, but I, I think the most exciting part to me about this whole thing, and this is kind of like the big uh, grand reveal, is that I am going to attempt for the first time in my life to actually take YouTube super seriously because there is a lot of upside on YouTube, you know? I look at a video like my RAV4 video, Top Mods or whatever it's called. That thing's almost at 100,000 views, right? And so that that proves that even though I only, and I hate this phrase, I only have 1,200 subscribers, like, no, fuck that. You put 1,200 people in a room, that's a lot of people. So I hate when people say, I only have this many followers. I only have this many subscribers. Like, get over yourself. Like, numbers aren't everything. It's about... It's about who's watching and who's engaging. That's the most important part. So for me, I'm just thinking like I have this opportunity. The summer's here. I have this opportunity to try and make YouTube work because ideally I don't want to go back to corporate America. I'm a creative at heart and, you know, very few people will get what I do. But when you see the output, you're like, oh, this is this is a really cool edit or whatever. And so, like, I want to really try to take YouTube as serious as I possibly can, at least for, like, a month or two. And if it's just not working out, then, you know, maybe maybe I will go back to corporate America. But the goal is to not have to go back to corporate America because corporate America just does not suit me very well at all, I don't think. You know, people, they don't get me. And it's fine. Like, it's not a big deal. I'm not for everybody. I understand that. And, but I I feel like I have something to say. I have something to prove. I definitely have a bit of a chip on my shoulder. I'm not going to lie because I've gone so many years of, of people just not seeing the vision. And it's very disheartening. And it's quite frankly, very validating when you have something like, all the vertical short form videos that I've done for Bubba. And I mean, I think if you add up YouTube, if you add up TikTok, if you add up Facebook and, and finally, you know, I'm, I'm on the Instagram and I'm adding a bunch of the reels that never made it up there. And it's gotta be North of like 30, 35 million total views 
on all those videos. And like, when you think about that, that's a lot of views. And so for people to still not get it, for people to still look and say, well, what does he have to offer? Like what Gary Cantrell, who is that guy? Like whatever. I have a lot to offer and I'm going to continue to prove what I have to offer, whether it's on this channel, whether it's making stuff for Bubba, you know, those guys believe in me and they, 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 without even knowing they, they took a chance on me in terms of like two years ago, just letting me create stuff and give it to them. And I, I don't know that I've ever had a kickback on one thing I've made. I think they've enjoyed all of it. And, and now, you know what I mean? Like, literally getting the job two weeks before I find out that I'm going to be laid off. Like I'm loyal. I'm, I'm loyal to those guys and I will go to fucking war with those guys in terms of let's get this brand elevated all the way up to where it belongs and where it should be so that Bubba, when he's ready to walk into the sunset, he's walking out on top on his terms that's the goal. That was the goal two years ago uh, before anybody knew who I was or what I was doing. That was always the goal was to help this man because he's been through a lot of shit. You know, the stuff that obviously everybody knows about. And when he made this video like a couple of years ago, talking about all of it and talking about how he knew he had you know made a mistake and he kind of laid it all out. I'm like, you know what? This this is like a side of him that I've never seen before. And it was the first time I had listened in a really long time. And it brought back to me everything I loved about the show and, you know, the charm that Bubba does have, you know, you might look at him on the exterior and think he's very rough around the edges, but actually he's a really cool dude. And, um, it was at that point where I'm just like, man, like if there's anything I can do to just bring this guy up, back to where he needs to be. And I'm not saying it's, you know, I'm single handedly, you know, it's, it's going to, it's going to be a team effort. And I think that in this year, 2024, got the best people in that building down there in Tampa. I wish I could be down there. I don't know that my wife will ever want to move to Tampa. It's very nice there though. And, um, I'm certainly going to try to visit a couple of times, but I did also just lose my job. So traveling, It's not going to be super easy, which kind of reminds me of one of the podcasts I did uh, earlier this year where I was like, yeah, I want to like do a travel channel on my YouTube or whatever. And yeah, when you lose your job, you can't really afford to travel. So I'm going to have to get creative with uh, some of the stuff that I make. But look, I think I've said it all here. And I want to just say very quickly before I get out of here um, to all of you that have believed in me, you see the vision You've always been there to like hulk me up and say like, man, you're, you're awesome. I appreciate you. And to those of you shit talking, non-believing, oh, what's that guy ever going to do? Keep betting against me. We'll see who, uh, we'll see who has the last laugh on that one. So. I will uh, talk to you guys very soon. Thank you for listening or watching. And if this is YouTube and you are watching and you've made it this far, you know already what I'm going to say. If you're not subscribed somehow, please hit the subscribe button. Please drop a like. Hit that bell for the notification so that you catch all the videos. And that is it for me. Thank you for being here.